Brand Follies incorporates dance theater with a cinematic approach. It's an homage to today and all the beautiful classics, um, especially in film and music of the 40s to 60s with a, a modern twist that is a place for people to be expressive of all genders. I really enjoy creating work that's site specific. I get to walk into a set that's already designed, which is so exciting for me. So we've done stuff that's happened at Bedlam, that's happened at Sleep No More, that's happened at the Folly down on Houston Street. At the same time, I love performing in a proscenium. I come from a ballet background. I had very little exposure to musical theater as a performer. I was working at Sleep No More as their ballet mistress and the producer came to me and said, hey, we're gonna start McKittrick Follies and we want you to audition and make something. The process uh, when coming into the studio with Breton is always very fast. You always be on your toes. You never know what's actually going to come at you. She'll give us a brief overview of what our goal is. There have been times where she'll have movement that she'll teach us. There are other times when we'll just start talking about feelings and characters and developing movement from there. When you're doing ballet, I think everyone has in their mind what ballet is. It's, it can be very rigid and stiff. She'll have me do something over and over again. She's like, no, too pretty, too pretty. Like, yes, it's a pirouette, but it doesn't have to be a perfect pirouette. Let it go. Comedy was something that was always at the root of who I am, but it was secretly expressed on the side of my ballet training. That was not something that was proper or welcome. I was the kid who was doing impressions of my teachers in the back down the hall. So that leads me to face today. I'm always fascinated with the face and how expressive the face can be. And so I like using other mediums besides just stage to really get up and close with camera, with expression, with character, and how that's going to enhance my storytelling as well as feature all the people I work with. Gender became part of the conversation with my time spent in cabaret as sort of a revealing of the female body, of its power, of its curves, of its value, of its volume, which was sort of the anti of ballet where I was asked to be straight, to be less, to be quiet. While gender is not really my interest or my focus, it became that because I was put in a box that asked me to be a certain way. And in breaking out of that box, it became very important for me to offer that experience to everyone else I'm working with. And it sounded awesome to step out of those roles that people typically like you to put in based on your general appearance. It offers a platform to allow people to have those conversations, whatever their journey is, whatever they're dealing with at that moment. With Breton, it's more about individuality and being who you are and finding the joy in who you are. Like, I have really big hair, and I've always had to constrain my hair, keep it in a slick bun because I had to look like other people. Breton allowed me to just let it out and just be free. Being a taller man in the dance world, they just want you to be a partner all the time, lift people, throw them around. And so it was great with Breton. She offered me to come in the studio and be me, not have to be somebody's ballet bar. She invites us to be ourselves, which invites her to be herself, which invites our audience to be themselves.